I have read this uh, ethereum.csv file and looking at the structure you can see it has 1544 observations and there are seven variables first variable is date followed by opening price high of the day low of the day closing price volume and market cap for this time series forecasting model we are going to use date and closing price so ethereum is a open source uh, public blockchain based uh, distributed computing platform and operating system which features smart contract functionality so it is a cryptocurrency and users are able to generate this eth through process of mining so currently ethereum is uh, priced at 186 dollars and 93 cents so it currently uh, trades in 594 active markets and has more than 9.8 billion dollars traded over last 24 hours so it has a market cap of over 20 billion dollars and you can see that it hit all time high of 1432.88 on january 13 2018 and it has all time low of about 42 cents in october 2015 so we are going to use this data from 2015 up to 2019 and we'll try to develop a prediction model for next 365 days let's look at first few rows of this data the first row is 28th october and then 27 and so on so latest data is at the top and also date format is day month and year but for using this uh, method we actually need year month and day format so converting this uh, date into the new format is very easy so let's say data dollar sign date so we'll store the new data in the same variable we can use function dm y day month and year because that's our current uh, format and then run this so now if you look at the header now you can see it is year month and date so this is the right format that we need so we can move on to the next step so let's do a quick plot and our data is named as data we can also give a heading so it has spent a lot of time at very low values and then it has touched uh, more than fourteen hundred dollars in early 2018 in order to see the patterns uh, when the values are quite low or when the values are quite high we can do a log transformation so let's store within ds data dollar sign date and then we can store within y log of data dollar sign close so we are going to use only closing prices and the dates in this analysis now let's store ds and y in df data frame so now we can again plot this and see what we get so we can say ethereum closing prices in log scale so for date we are going to use ds for close we'll use y which is log transformed and data we have df so now we can run this so earlier we were not able to see any clear pattern when the values were very low now we are able to see those patterns very clearly so we are going to use facebook's profit package for this forecasting and we are going to store results in m so the data frame that we created is called df and now we can run this so it doesn't take much time and uh, we have the results very quickly so if you like to see what is inside the uh, m you can do strm it contains a list of 31 items you will see that there's a lot of like time series uh, forecasting related data one of the list items is history which contain our date variable ds and also our log transformed ethereum prices y so we'll be making forecast for next 365 days and for that i'm going to create this future so we'll make use of make future data frame we'll use this m that we obtained 
and we'll specify that we need predictions for 365 days. So if you want to look at last few values of future, you can do tail future. So you can see the predictions go to 2020. So next year, October 27th. Now let's store within forecast these predictions using predict and our model is in M and we want to do prediction for future. So we have uh, done predictions. Now let's do some plots. Our model is in M and we can use forecast that contains the predictions and plot this. So you can see the black dots are actual data points and the blue line is predicted line and then also October 29th onwards so those predictions are given here. So this dark uh, line is the point estimate and then you have the confidence interval and as you go further in future that confidence interval gets wider and wider because of uncertainty. So let's do one more plot which is interactive. You can see that uh, this plot is interactive. So it provides uh, date, actual and predicted values. So for example, on January 1st, 2020, the predicted value, this is in log scale, is uh, 4.93. We can always take exponential of this number. So this is 4.93. So the actual price of Ethereum is expected to be about $138. Another useful plot is plotting the components. So we can use profit underscore plot underscore components and say M and forecast. So the top graph uh, gives the prediction and then we have day of the week uh, pattern. So you can see on Monday the closing prices are usually low and Friday they are usually high. So this is based on last uh, four years of data from 2015 to 2019. Looking at the yearly pattern, what we notice is relatively during summer months, closing prices are on the higher side. And in winter months like uh, November, December, January, the closing prices tend to be lower. So note that our original data was based on data from 2015 to 2019 and there were 1544 observations or rows of data and then forecast was done for additional 365 days so 1544 and 365 gives us 1909 observations in forecast if you look at structure of the forecast so it has so many observations and 19 different variables the last variable is y hat, which is the predicted value. So let's store this y hat in PRED. And we'll only use 1544, first 1544 data points. So I'm going to say within square brackets, 1 to 1544. Similarly, we have actual values also. If you look at first few rows of DF, where we have stored dates and actual log transformed values so you'll notice that the first few rows start with the latest data but these predictions are in actual sequence starting with the earliest date first and recent date at a later point so we cannot use y directly so what we'll do is we'll make use of m history and the y values which are stored there so this will be in sync with the predicted values so now we can plot these two so actual on the x-axis and predicted on the y-axis so you can see overall pattern is linear so we can also draw a line of best fit using a b line using linear model p r e d as a function of actual and let's say we want to use color red so all these uh, data points on red line is the ideal situation which uh, never happens in practice so there is some variability around this we can calculate r square so let's do summary 
based on this linear uh, model we get a r square of 0.9916 so about 99 percent variability is being explained by this model so let's do some more calculations of uh, performance uh, matrix so we'll do cross validation using our model m and 365 days and we can say that our data or units is days so we have data for each day and let's store this in x and then we can do performance underscore matrix using this x and we can also use a rolling window let's say about 10 percent it calculates uh, mse mean square error root mean square error mae mape and coverage the day starts with 36 days because we are using a window of 10 percent so we are using a rolling window rolling window is a proportion of data to use in each rolling window for computing metrics so if you use 0.1 that means 10 percent of the data is to be used and if you increase to 20 percent that means more data will be needed if you run with 0.2 so your starting will be even later because more data will be needed to calculate this matrix so now actually you start at 73rd day and so on let's keep this at 0.1 so now we can actually plot this using plot underscore cross validation metric and the data is in x we can specify the metric that we want to plot so let's say we want root mean square error we can also specify what rolling window we want to use so we'll say 0.1 so if you run this you get a plot so you can see these are the actual data points for root mean square error and then the first value for this line is uh, based on the rolling window if you use like 0.2 so we'll notice that this line will start at a later point and you can always uh, change it to any other metric that you want out of the ones that are available so for example if you want mae we can do mae 